1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 to verse 18. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Hallelujah. I'm Prophet Ezekiel Melchizedek. I come your way with the words of comfort while we are waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ. Stay tuned. Hallelujah. The world. Praise God. The world. What I did on the cross. Go and tell the whole The Bible tells us 
that God speaks his word on purpose because the word of the Lord is meant for our soul. That is why Jesus says, your soul is the one that gives you life. Your spirit is the one that gives you life. Your flesh will profit you nothing. You will gain nothing. You will have nothing when you live only by feeding your flesh. When you are satisfied, when you eat food, your flesh is the one that is enjoying it. But it has not guaranteed that you will need to see tomorrow because you are eating today. Otherwise, so many rich people will eat three square meals a day, they wouldn't die. But you see, the truth is, we only eat food so that we can be energized. When you eat food, you are empowered physically. You have strength to stand on your feet, strength to walk. That's the purpose of food, but not for me or for life. Life is given by God. God gives us life in our soul. Our souls are energized. So when your soul is not saved, that means you are perishing. In Luke chapter 12, the Bible tells us a parable of the ritual. We are going to read Luke chapter 12, verse 16 to verse number 21, Luke chapter 12. And he spoke the parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plenty. And he talked within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my bands and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my fruits. And I will say to my soul, Soul, that has my fruits laid out for many years. Take thine eat, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? Verse 21. So he see that they have treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. So the Bible tells us here that Jesus spoke a parable. He spoke a parable to tell us how important the salvation of the soul is. We're talking about the salvation of the soul. Now, Jesus tells us that the man is very rich. He has great house. He has a wonderful house. Great and mighty house. And the guy you just want to find a way of satisfying himself with life. And he thought the best thing to do is to build a big gospel house so he can pull all his money there. Then he will be enjoying himself. Well, the Bible tells us that the guy said that he is going to say to his soul, he has nothing to tell God, but he has something to tell his soul. He is always thinking about the satisfaction of his soul, but he's not thinking about the salvation of the soul. So the guy said in verse 19, Luke chapter 2, verse 19, I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast my goose laid up for many years. Take thine eats, eat drink and be merry. So he says, my soul. Are oh, you see one of the things we have to know is that we don't own our soul. The soul doesn't belong to us. Your soul is God's property. 
that soul who was created and given to you by God. Then you don't have power over your soul. It's either you give God a chance to rule and save your soul, or you give the devil a chance to mislead you and destroy your soul. So the guy said, I will say to my soul, my soul, my soul, take your peace, eat, drink, and remember. You want his soul to be happy because he has food for many years. Your food is not for your soul. That is why the guy got it wrong. He said, my soul has food, but the food is not meant for your soul. Your food is for your flesh. It's only the threat that benefits the food that you eat. Your veins, your blood system, your bones, these are the beneficiaries of food, but not the soul. Because the soul in you is a spirit. It doesn't feed on food. Fufu, gumbum, yam, rice, fried rice, chicken and chips, spaghetti, <laughs> hallelujah. Mm -hmm. All this food we eat, they don't benefit the soul. It is for our flesh. They don't guarantee the happiness of the soul. They don't guarantee the strength of your soul. They don't guarantee the longevity, the lifespan of your soul. This food, they only give energy and strength to your flesh. So that is why this rich man got it wrong. He thought he has stored something for his soul. And that's the problem with so many rich people in this world. When they get money, they think it will give them satisfaction of their soul. Until they get so much, but they still see that there is a back. That's why the rich never sees working and demanding and hustling for money. The more money they have, the more they would like to get more. Because they don't have contentment. Because they don't feel satisfied. Because they thought that they should have much, much, much more money than their soul will be satisfied. But what they are lacking is the feed or the salvation of the soul. Their soul is not saved. And that's why they lack contentment of the soul. And they think that food in abundance is okay. That's what they need. That's what they satisfy their soul. But they are wrong. May God help us. Amen. So we're not think like that. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We don't even think like the way they will think. The way you think like that, you get it wrong. Because God doesn't want us to live just by eating it or having money. Money is for your flesh, it's for your material needs, it's for physical needs, but it does not save the soul, feed the soul, satisfy the soul, or prolong the lifestyle of the soul. Of that is why God told the guy that he's a fool. Can you imagine that? Luke chapter 12. Now, verse 19. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast demanded this letter for many years. Think that he is a dream and merry. He's a fool for thinking like that. That the goods are meant for the soul. The money is meant for your soul. Or food is meant for your soul. The clothing, the house, the buildings is meant for the sustenance of your soul. When you think like that, God sees you as a fool. So, verse 20, but God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then, who? shall those things be which thou hast provided. 
God showing us the truth because he lacked the salvation of the soul. His own soul was not guaranteed life for many years. He has guaranteed food for many years, but the soul doesn't have guarantee for many years. The star house he built is a guarantee for the food. So to keep the food for many years. But he couldn't build a star house for the soul. The star house for the soul is the salvation of your soul. Hallelujah. Amen. May God help us to discover the realities of the spirit. So we can build a spiritual star house for our soul. And that is salvation for our soul. When you lack salvation for your soul, your soul perish at long last. The storehouse of the soul is salvation. Now, God said, your soul will be required from you. Verse 21. So he see that they have a treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. So, he is not rich toward God because he doesn't know God. The word of God is not in him. His soul is not saved. His soul is perishing. His soul doesn't know God. His soul is empty. You see, the richness of the soul is a discovery of God's word. Amen. The richness of the soul is a salvation of the soul. When your soul is saved, then your soul can be enriched so that you begin to enjoy the God. Hallelujah. Psalm 100. You are here. Moving in and out of me. My name is Prophet Ezekiel. How worship you. The minister of the Salvation Christ. I worship you. Also known as the Yeshua Artist Minister. You are here. I want to take this opportunity to invite you to watch Working every Sunday from 9 a.m. till noon. I worship you. And every Wednesday morning is 9 a.m. till noon. I worship you. Operation Same You are here. And then every last Friday on the PH9. I worship you. You are here Working in this place I worship you I worship you Hello precious one You're watching the Yeshua Artist Broadcast God bless you for watching We are spreading the gospel to the nations Matthew chapter 24 verse 14 The Bible says this gospel shall be preached in all the world For a witness against the nations Before the end of the world shall come Yes now we want to invite you To support the work of God Sponsor the work of God Be a partner in this broadcast You can send your tithes, your seeds, your offerings Oh yes your partnership offerings And the Lord will bless you Look at the numbers shown in the screen You can call the telephone numbers You can also look at our banking details I believe that God is going to bless your life now you know to know that the gospel is a fertile soil where you can sow your seed. So God will give you a harvest of righteousness. Where you give, the Bible says, it shall come back to you with measure press now. Shaking together, running over, shall be given unto you. Because in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. And I want you to understand that God has a package of blessings for you as he sponsors this broadcast. God bless you. Hallelujah. What kind of life? That is to say, the life that God created for us. To enjoy. So, the salvation of the soul is practically one, giving your life to Jesus. Two, you allow the word of God to dwell in you. Three, you pray to God all the time. Call upon Him. That is what will enrich your soul. When your soul is not enriched, you can imagine that you are losing in totality. So many people are lost because their soul did not know God. The soul is empty. And it is a very painful thing for your soul to be empty. 
Because of that is where God will give judgment or blessings. That is the soul. When human beings can discover this from God's word, we become wanderers. We wander around from God's word. We wander around from the truth. We wander around from reality. Now we're going to read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is salvation. That is salvation. You see, Paul's prayer for the children of God was that they will be sanctified. That is salvation. Sanctification is a period of abstinence from sin. Sanctification is abstinence from sin, from evil. When you abstain from sin and evil, you sanctify your soul. Mm -hmm. And that is the salvation of the soul. Mm -hmm. It is very important. If you want your soul to be saved, you need to be sanctified holy. Then his prayer is your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved. Blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ because that's the object of salvation. But here, he takes time to mention three different things. He talks about spirit, he talks about soul, he talks about body. The body is the flesh. Our body is the container, is the receptacle, or live in the body. Or the body can simply be defined as our house. But the real you is the soul. But the soul does not live alone. The soul lives.
praise the Lord. You're welcome back. I believe that message was a timely message. God spoke to you in the car of your hand. It may not be speaking to you in this way. I want to tell you there is a time for a decision. Decision is the greatest power that God gave you. It is time for you to give your life to Jesus Christ. It's not a big deal now. You want to give your life to Jesus, just pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for saving me. I receive you into my life. Forgive my sins and wash away my sins with the blood of Jesus. Write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you just pray that prayer, I want you to understand that you are born again. Now you live in principle as a born again child of God. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. The Bible says, If anyone is in Christ a new creation, behold, all things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. So now it is time for me to pray and speak into your destiny. I want you to touch my palm with your finger like this on the screen right now. Whatever you are believing God for, just have join your faith with mine as we pray. God is going to touch your life. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for this precious soul. That your grace, your power, your glory, your anointing will visit them. Be their redeemer, be their deliverer, be their savior. Make a way where there seems to be no way. Open doors that the enemy is closed. Business doors open, financial doors open, marital doors open. Doors of opportunities. May the Lord heal your bones and deliver you from every demonic affliction and suppression. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for touching your children. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe that God has touched your life and changed your destiny. And I believe that you like to worship with us. You can worship. Hallelujah. Psalm 100. You are here. Moving in and out of me. My name is Prophet Ezekiel. I worship you. I'm the minister of the Salvation Christian Church. I worship you. Also known as the Yeshua Address Minister. You are here. I want to take this opportunity to invite you to worship us every Sunday from 9 a.m. till noon. I worship you. And every Wednesday morning is 9 a.m. I worship you. Operation Save You are here. And then every last Friday of the night is the night. I worship you. I worship you. The salvation house at the back of you. You are here. Working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. 